Now it's time. <clears throat> Now it's time for some trig. Okay, we're gonna do a x plus cosine x. This one, we have to pay close attention to. Do you have a restricted domain on it? It's from zero to two pi. Let's start with the first derivative. Okay, first derivative, derivative of x is one. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay, so we get one minus sine x. That's not gonna be undefined anywhere. So to find the critical number, we have to set this first derivative equal to zero. Okay, zero equals one minus sine x. When you move things around, you're gonna get sine x equals one. Now, we need to look at the unit circle in order to find out what angle will give you a y value of one. And if you're only looking between zero and two pi, the only angle that occurs at is gonna be pi over two. Okay, so pi over two is gonna be the one and only critical number for this problem because again the first derivative is not undefined anywhere which means that this is the only one that we're going to put on our number line and we're going to test a number less than and greater than pi over 2. Now since we are including 0 on our interval we can test 0, that's an easy one to try, and then we're going to test pi. We want to test some numbers that are just easy to do when we put it back into the first derivative. Sine of 0 is zero, so therefore you end up with a one, you get a plus. Put pi, sine of pi is zero. That's plus also. Okay, so this is what we end up with. So we have the critical number. Write that down first. So critical number, the only one, is pi over two. We have intervals of increasing, which is gonna be from Remember, we have to actually include the endpoints on here, so we're going to include 0, and that's going to go up to pi over 2, and then from pi over 2 to 2 pi. We've got to include the endpoints. These are not going to go to infinity this time because we have uh, closed uh, ends on each of those. Decreasing is going to be none this time. It's none because we don't have any negatives on there. What about relative extrema? None, okay? There's no relative max and no relative min here because there's no change in sign there. So no local extrema, okay? So we don't get any extra points out of that this time. So actually that's all we can do now for the first derivative. We've gone through all that and that's all we can find. The next thing we're gonna do is move on to the second derivative. Okay, so y double prime, derivative of sine is cosine, so you're going to get a negative cosine when we take the derivative. This is not undefined anywhere, so the next way to find a point that will go on our number line is going to be setting this equal to zero. We want to look for any angle between zero and two pi that gives us an x value of zero, because essentially we can divide both sides by, by ne the negative there and have it equal to uh, cosine equals zero. Okay, so we want to find the angle that occurs there. That's going to happen at two places. If you look at the unit circle, x value is zero at pi over two, 90 degrees, and three pi over two, which is 270 degrees. These are the two numbers that are going to go on your table when we're working with the second derivative. Okay, three pi over two, and you should be reminding yourself that you have these endpoints. I didn't do that for the first derivative, but you should actually be putting zero and two pi on your number line ends there, just, to, just so you know you can't test something outside of that. So you wanna test something only between zero and pi over two, and again, the endpoint is okay there, so remember to always include your uh, endpoints when you're doing that. This one, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna test zero. It's okay to use the test point there. In between here, I can use a pi, and then in between three pi over two and two pi, again, that's, this is a 1.5 pi. If you wanna use like a 1.75 pi or, or a, something like that. Uh, and again, anything in between there is gonna work. In fact, you can either, you can even use, again, endpoint is okay to use in that one as well. So anything in between is fine, but you might as well use the endpoint since they're included, it's the easiest to put in here. So these are putting back into the second derivative 
Cosine of zero is one times negative. You get a negative there for the first piece. Next we put a pi. Cosine of pi is negative one, but times negative will give you a plus. And then if you put two pi in there, you're back at the same starting point you were at zero. So this will be a negative region in here as well. So any point in there, even if I would have done the, the 1.75 pi, that would have given me the same result, but two pi was easier to put in. Now that we have this complete, we're ready to talk about the concavity. Let's do concave up first. Concave up is gonna be where you see a plus, so pi over two, three pi over two. Okay, where you have a plus sign there. Then you're gonna do concave down is where you have negatives. Remember that you gotta uh, consider these endpoints here. So again, that's another reason why it's good to put those on your table so that way you get the right result and you don't put uh, negative infinity or infinity by mistake. So we're gonna do a bracket, zero to pi over two. And then we're gonna go also from three pi over two, not including that, to two pi, we'll put a bracket on the end there. So this is the place where it's gonna be concave down. Again, second derivative tells you concavity. Now we do have some inflection points here because we have a change in concavity happening. So we're gonna, we, for this, inflection points, let's label those. We're gonna have, first of all, pi over two is the x value. The other one is three pi over two. Remember that when you're putting these values, these x values in, you're putting them back into the original equation uh, for both of those. So when you put pi over two into here, you get pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, so you're gonna be left with pi over two. Next, you put three pi over two in. Three pi over two you get here, cosine of three pi over two, that's zero also, so then this one you're gonna get three pi over two. Okay, so these are gonna be your two uh, inflection points. Now we wanna find the intercepts. Okay, so we'll do that up here. Intercepts, first of all, we wanna find the uh, y-intercept. Y-intercept, you're gonna make x equal to zero and plug it in here. We get zero plus cosine of zero, cosine of zero is one. So we get the point uh, zero, one. Now, let's talk about the x-intercept. Now, normally I have to set this equal to zero, but that's gonna be difficult to solve without a calculator. Do I have to do that? No, I don't actually, because let's think about this. If, it's, if you're at zero, one, and we know it's, it's increasing from there, we know it's not gonna come down and cross the x-axis anywhere, so, we're, so on our interval between zero and two pi, we're not gonna see it cross the x-axis. So now, with that, we're ready to do our graph. Okay, so, Let's do some labeling. Because my y values are in terms of radians and the x values are in radians, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna do uh, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing along here. Do pi here, three pi over two, and two pi. Okay, let's graph the inflection points, pi over two and pi over two and then three pi over two and three pi over two. That's right here. We also know it goes through uh, zero one. Now pi over two is about 1.5 approximately. So it's gonna be a little bit lower. So the graph is gonna be about uh, right there. And then we don't have anything else on the end. If you wanted to see where it is at the endpoints, you could most certainly do that. If you put two pi into here, uh, you get two pi plus cosine of two pi is one. So one plus two pi would be about seven approximately. So if we add, if we keep on going uh, with this one and add another pi over two to it, you get five pi over two. So on the end, it's gonna be somewhere in between. So what I did was I just put in the end point there, two pi into here to find out where the graph is gonna actually end. So now we know the graph is gonna be somewhere in between there. Okay, now let's use this information in order to draw the curve. It's not just gonna go up exponentially like that. We have to make sure we draw it according to the information that we found. So the very first thing is it's uh, between zero and, two pi, zero and pi over two, it's concave down. That means I gotta draw it like this. It's gotta be curving down there at that point. 
And then between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, it's concave up. So now it's going to look like this. And then from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, it goes back to concave down again. So now it's, it's going to go like this. Okay, so this concavity is really important here. We know it's going to be increasing all the way, and certainly it is, but we have to be careful to make sure we draw the curve correctly and use our concavity uh, and draw it the way we got when we did the calculations.